Hello viewer, welcome back. I've had an idea. This is lime wood, very boring. Right, I've got this piece which I'm going to use later on with it. I've got a tenon on it now and as you can see I just put the glue chuck on the larger block which will enable me to get a, a tenon on this end then take that off and I'll be putting a tenon on this end as well I think Got a tenon on that end, I'm going to remove the glue chuck now and then put a tenon on this end as well. Sanding sealant. 
this lime it's uh, so it's not got a lot going for it really but it's a lovely wood to turn it's um, not too hard not too soft very smooth to turn uh, people that carve wood use lime a lot got some uh, black American walnut now, I want to take a piece off this. Saves it flying all over the place if you put the tail stuck up. Right, that's that bit done. It'll be a bit smaller yet. Right, on to the next bit. Right, I want to glue this bit onto this bit. So I'll put this back in the chuck and I've just took a very fine skim off this edge made with the square carbide cutters, make sure it's nice and flat so I've got a good gluing surface. So I'm going to take it out now, take it over to the bench and glue it on, clamp it on, leave it for a bit and start on the next bit. Right, I've got the walnut ring on now so I'm going to reduce it down slightly so it matches with the inside of this, make sure there's a nice flat surface on there as well. And maybe just take a little bit off the outside. That's a fraction more to go to make it flush with the bottom there. Yeah. I'm just rounding this <coughs> this walnut ring off a bit now. I still want to leave it bigger than this. So I'm just going over it gently with the scraper. Or even the skew chisel. That'll do. I'm just starting now with a little texture wheel. I want to put some texture on this walnut. I've got it upright at the moment and then I'll change the angles and it doesn't want to be a pattern, it just wants to be sort of pretty random. You could do it with a little Dremel tool I suppose. That's a good start. Now I'll change the angle and Get a bit of a more random pattern on it. That's it, that's nicely roughed up. 
That looks good. Believe me, it looks good. Right, I'll change the angle again, do a bit more, get it really rough looking. Right, I've got the second piece in the chuck now, so I'm going to hollow this out a bit first, like I did the base, and then I uh, can turn it around and get some shape on it. carry on like that until I've got it the same size as the, the other half. We'll see you in a bit. Right, remember the piece I cut off the block earlier on? This is it. This is going to be a right challenge. I haven't got a clue if it's going to work or not. Or if I'm capable of doing it. As you can see, the idea is to cut these wings right back as far as I can, but I don't want to go much further in than this circle that I've made. So uh, I'll carry on very, very gently. <laughs> I think it's getting there. A lot of work to go though. Right, I've gone into the back of this now and I've just cut it back so I've got a bit of room to work to curve these corners, hopefully. Um, this is the second piece by the way, the first one didn't work out, it was totally wrong <laughs> but this is the first time I've tried something like this so it's only to be expected getting there one corner is slightly short but that doesn't matter for this so uh, I'm just going to take that even thinner if I can and then I'll show you the next stage. Right, that's stuck on. Now the next bit, I don't really want the middle, that's got to come out. A little bit of cleaning up. That was a bit thicker than I thought it was, but uh, I've got to thin it down quite a lot yet and then open this out to the same to match the rest of it. Well, I'm going over to the bench now because I've got to finish these bits of sanding off with a little Dremel tool and uh, put a bit of colour on it and then I'll show you the finished article. Right, <laughs> nearly finished, but you can't have a burger without a little bit of ketchup just oozing out the side a little bit.
little bit there. A little bit here. I think that'll do. Put the top bun on. Should fit anyway. That's it. There you go. <laughs> oh dear. A nice big quarter pounder with cheese and ketchup. Oh dear, I don't know why I do these things. I tell you what, it tests your tool skills doing that, especially the cheese bit. So there you go. Uh, that's my little bit of fun for this week. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. It was good fun to make actually. So uh, I'll see you soon for the next one. But in the meantime, I'll just carry on with the um, Hampshire Sheen High Gloss Review. Right, um, this is the Wood Wax 22 that I used. And just the one coat. And I've always been pleased with this finish. Except for one thing. And it does tend to dull off quite quickly. So I tend to use a micro crystalline on top of that. To help you keep it shine. This is the Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. You see the reflection is just better and uh, that's a really good finish. Very very smooth. The wood wax there's a good finish on it. I've never been unhappy with it. It doesn't quite feel so smooth and that's just my my opinion. I shouldn't have to touch this because it's got this, this the Hampshire Sheen one. It's got micro crystalline in it. Right by the magic of video, I've just been in my dinner. Um, comparisons now. Um, the Hampshire Sheen high gloss, I like it. It's a nice product. You hardly have to use any at all. Whereas um, the one I use, much bigger tin. But it's, it's uh, quite soft and you tend to scoop quite a lot onto your cloth so probably a lot of it gets wasted without even realising it um, I think that cost me about 10 quid a tin something like that but then of course hey, I've got to add the micro crystalline which is another £9.44 uh, the Hampshire Sheen I'm not sure of the prices to be honest but you can look it up um, I know it, it sounds quite dear, or did sound quite dear, but it's got the microcrystalline in it. You only use the tiniest bit, so only time will tell if this is going to last me as long as this. It'll probably take me 12 months to, to find out. But um, I'm very pleased with the, the high gloss Hampshire Sheen. And, uh, that's all I can say about it really. Um, there's lots of polishes on the market, but if you want to give this a try, why not? I'm always looking for improvements on my finishes and what have you. I think I've got the sanding down to a fine art now. And uh, that's the main thing really. You can spend a fortune on polishes, but if you haven't prepared the piece right in the first place, you're not going to get a good finish. So it's worth taking your time on the preparation and then apply your finish. So that's that one. Um, next one I'm going to use the uh, wax stick. There we go. Against my wax stick. And uh, that will be probably at the end of the next video. So um, I'll see you soon. Cheerio.